So we're going to begin, Kevin, with a little thought experiment. And it asks this. Is it ever possible for an object to have constant speed and yet still be accelerating? Can you have a constant speed and also be accelerating? No? No. Lena says yes. yes. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> but you may have been, Lena, more profound than you realized. What did you say? Uh, probably wouldn't ask. Okay, so you're thinking Duick probably wouldn't ask the question if there wasn't some trick to it. So if I tell you the answer is yes, how can you be going at a constant speed but still be accelerating, Nate? All vectors have two things, magnitude, speed, if we're talking velocity, and direction. you're changing velocity, which is the definition of acceleration. I've always been very careful. Acceleration is defined as a change in velocity, which can happen in three ways. Change in speed, change in direction, or both. And what we're going to be looking at is what we call uniform circular motion. Look up. We're going to be looking at this for the next almost month and a half where an object is going at a constant speed. I'm spinning this toy around my head at pretty much a constant speed, but it's definitely changing direction because when it's here, it's heading straight towards Mitra. When it's here, it's heading straight towards the front of the room. When it's here, it's heading towards that wall. And when it's here, Caleb should be ducking if this breaks. It's changing direction, but it's not changing speed. And that's going to be the weird thing with moving in a circle. It's going to be a situation where our direction will be changing, but our speed will not be. Now, it is also possible to be speeding up or slowing down while I'm doing that. We're not going to look at that. That we need calculus for. So we're going to look at an object moving at a constant speed in a circle. We have a fancy phrase for that. We call it uniform circular motion. Circular motion, because you're moving in a circle. Uniform, because you're not speeding up or slowing down. Only your direction is changing. Its velocity is changing because its direction is changing. And if its velocity is changing, it must be accelerating. This is the most important fact for us to remember. If you're moving in a circle, you're accelerating. Which, by the way, means the net force can never be zero. Kevin, in our winner minus loser equations, it's always going to be equals something. First question is, what's the direction of the acceleration? Caleb, you with me? It's called an attention span up here. There's two ways that we can figure it out. The first is, you might recall last year, I taught you that our bodies have a built-in accelerometer, but it's backwards. When you speed up, you feel like you're getting flung backwards. When you hit the brakes, you feel like you're getting flung forwards, even though you're clearly accelerating backwards. What about when you go in a circle on the rides on Playland? Which way do you feel like you're getting pushed? Outwards. Outwards. So which way is the acceleration? Inwards. Now we're going to prove that vectorially. So the direction is inwards. The way we're going to do it is we're going to take our VF equals VI plus AT. But now I'm being very meticulous. I'm putting the vector symbols because direction is going to make a difference. We're going to get the A by itself. Oh, you would minus the VI and divide by T. Um, by the way, our acceleration is also changing direction and it's not constant, so this is only going to be true for a very, very tiny time interval. Uh, in calculus, those of you that are in calculus, this will be true for the limit as t approached zero. But we're not going to be getting that high tech. So since t, delta t, is a scalar, all of the direction for the acceleration comes from that. So I figure if I can figure out the direction of v final minus v initial, that will be the same as the direction for acceleration. Now, we already know what we think the answer is. Braden, what did you say the direction of the acceleration is probably? Inwards. Let's prove it. So here's a little picture. I have a VI. We're traveling this way. And then a split second later, our VF, we're traveling that way because I wanted a very, very tiny time interval. I'm going to subtract two vectors. How do I subtract two vectors? I don't. What? 
Oh, wow. Welcome back to September. So here where it says VF minus VI, let's write VF plus the opposite negative VI. So VF is going to stay the same. Yeah. And, and I'm going to add to it the opposite of VI. So instead of VI pointing that way, what's the opposite of pointing that way? So it's going to look like this. So there's VF. There's VI. How do I add two vectors together? I did draw them tip to tail. And then the resultant is from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. And which way is that little arrow pointing? Toward the center. Braden is right. So there's a lovely algebraic vector proof. Also, a nice little bit of a review of vectors. We're just going to memorize that, though. If you're moving in a circle, which way are you accelerating? Towards the center. If you're moving in a circle, which way are you accelerating, Mitra? If you're moving in a circle, Spencer, which way are you accelerating? I'm going to ask you the same question. I'm just going to phrase it slightly differently. I want exactly the same answer. When I do winner minus loser in my free body diagrams, what direction is the winner? Towards the center towards the center, not who's winning. It's always going to be the winning direction is towards the center. Which way will the longer arrow be pointing? Whatever arrow is pointing towards the center. So for an object moving in a circle is accelerating towards the center or generically accelerating inwards. A ball is on a frictionless tabletop and it's rolled along a circular track as seen below in top view. So we're staring down at it. The track is not a complete circle, and the ball leaves the track right there. When the ball leaves the track, which path will it follow? A or B or C? Once again, we get a chance to vote. Once again, how high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. So the ball is rolling, rolling, rolling. When it leaves the track, which path will it follow? Who says path A, Mr. Duke? It's moving in a circle. Path A. You got one, two. So path A, due to the fact that the ball has circular momentum, two. Path B, because there's no force on it. Path C, because uh, it wants to fall out, because when I've gone on a merry-go-round on a playground, I feel like I'm getting thrown out. Okay. okay path B is correct, because... Once it leaves right here, are there any forces acting on it? Now Newton's first will kick in. It's going to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. So here's the next question. If I spin this around my head and I really, 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 really want to get Braden in the head with this and I take a pair of scissors ready to cut the string, when do I want to cut the string? Where do I want this ball so that I'm likely to hit Braden in the head? I want the string pointing pretty much at a, to my left, to your right, to that side, because if I cut the string, it's going to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. It'll hit Braden. Shall we do the experiment? Yes. I can't. This toy isn't made anymore, and it's just too useful. It's the first physics toy I ever bought, by the way. It's going on 10 years old. One of these days, it's going to snap just because the string is going to wear out, and that'll make for another interesting story. But someone will get hit. Turn the page. Sarah, I need to overcome a bunch of preconceptions. Turn the page. You see, the problem is all of you have sat in a car going around a corner, and you have thought to yourself, I'm getting pushed outwards. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. There is no force pushing you outwards. Instead, your body wants to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. That's Newton's first. But which way do you need to accelerate? To go around a corner, you need to be accelerating inwards. It's the door coming of the car coming and pressing against you and applying the inwards force 
what's forcing you in a circle, but you think you're getting pushed outwards. It's actually your body's own inertia, Newton's first. Your body wants to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. If you talk to your grandfather, he may admit to this. Back in the 50s, before seatbelts were mandatory, when all the cars had bench seats, not bucket seats, and you were going on a date with a high school girl, you would get some surfer's wax and you would wax down the bench so it was really slippery. And you would drive with your right arm on the seat and you would make a really quick, hard right turn and the girl would come sliding across right into you and you'd put your arm around her, oh, hi, honey, and you'd keep driving. Ask your grandfather if he ever pulled that slick move. Now, that's not what's happening. What's really happening is the girl is going in a straight line. The car is moving underneath her and bringing her in toward... The male is moving towards her. Okay? Put your pencils down. Look up. This discussion is important because, Sarah, my angel, many years of experience in a car leads most students to believe that there is an outwards force. There is no outwards force. But you'll even hear it described. They'll talk about centrifugal force with an F, centrifugal force, which is not a force. It's actually your body's own inertia. And for you to resist the inertia, a force has to be applied on you to turn the corner. The car pushes against you. You think it's you getting pushed against the car. No, the car pushes against you. So a bird's eye view confirms that this outwards push is not a f outwards, but in a straight line. You saw the two gentlemen that were flying off didn't go flying straight out from the center. They went off at a right angle to the center. And it's not a force. It won't show up in a free body diagram. It's just the mass, of, it's an object's resistance to change, mass. Furthermore, the vector analysis that we just finished doing says actually the net force is inwards towards the center. Example four. If fighter pilots move too fast into a loop, they can become unconscious due to a, a lack of blood flow to the brain. People will say, oh, the blood got forced out of their brain. Is that actually correct? No. Oh, Caleb, say it. What? The blood stays in the same So there's the blood in the torso. It wants to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. What really happens is the person's brain and torso get forced away from the blood. It pools in your legs. Put your pencils down. So I heard Spencer say something like, that pilot must have the funnest job. Not really. Their bodies take a beating. Now, fighter pilots wear these G-suits. They are designed to have cuffs around their legs and around their arms that inflate when they detect certain G accelerations, which prevent the blood from pooling in their legs. But also the fighter pilots, they do sit-ups and crunches and sit-ups and crunches. What you're really doing is the same muscles that you use to make your face go red on purpose, you're tensing all those muscles in your body to try and force as much blood to your head as you can. Now, the fighter pilots wear G-suits. The performance pilots, like the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds and the Snowbirds, they can't wear the G-suits because it interferes with their ability to maneuver that quickly and that tightly. So those ones, if you go to the air shows, they're doing it all cold turkey. They do lots of sit-ups and lots of crunches, and, lot, and they got to be... There's a reason why you just don't see any fat, flabby fighter pilots. You cannot do that without blacking out. So how do we calculate circular acceleration? There is a lovely proof, but it's a bit long. I'm just going to give you the equation. And this is the first one that's on your formula sheet under circular motion. It's acceleration. I use the letter C, but I always use a subscript. Sorry, letter A. I always use a subscript of a C for circular acceleration. It's really centripetal acceleration, but you can just think C for circular. And it's V squared over R. where V is how fast you're traveling around the circle, and R is how far away you are from the center of the circle, the radius. This is a scalar equation. What's the direction of the acceleration, Braden? Inwards. That, if you want to write a direction, inwards. But I'm rarely going to ask you for the direction because, well, where am I on the circle, Mr. Do I don't know. Inwards. Okay. Now, how do I get the speed 
how do I figure out how fast you're traveling? Well, speed is distance over time if you're not accelerating. Mr. Duick, you said we are accelerating. You're accelerating in a change of direction, but the magnitude isn't accelerating, so that works. So speed going around a circle is going to be the time to go once around the circle. And here is where we run into a problem. Have I mentioned occasionally that we need more letters in our alphabet? Yeah. Okay, because we call this the period, and the symbol is capital T. And I've also used it for tension. Don't get tension and, and the period to go around a circle mixed up. This is a time in seconds. And then the D is going to be the distance around the circle, the circumference. Hey, what's the equation for the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. You want to know how fast you're going around the circle? If you know the radius, it's 2 times pi times r divided by how long it took you to go around once, the period. This is one, by the way, if you're at Playland and you're trying to figure out how fast you're going on the Music Express or how fast you're going on the Revelation. Right there. Measure the radius using some trig and then just time the period on your stopwatch. Pick somebody, start your stopwatch when they go past you, stop it when they come past you again, or better yet, do it for five laps and then stop and divide by five because that would probably cancel out a lot of your errors. Uh, another concept closely related to period is called frequency. Frequency, so period is how many seconds to make one cycle. Frequency is how many cycles per second. This unit, cycle per second, is also known as hertz. Frequency is measured in hertz. And if you examine the units, period is cycles per second, frequency is, sorry, period is seconds per cycle, frequency is cycles per second. They're reciprocals of each other. If you know the period, it's one over the frequency, or frequency is one over the period. If I know one, I know the other one. They're reciprocals of each other. So, very quickly, for example, uh, let's suppose I'm riding the Ferris wheel at Playland. Ferris wheel, uh, exciting ride or tame ride? Okay. Fairly tame. Okay. Let's suppose it rotates every 12 seconds. The period would be 12 seconds. The frequency it rotates at 0 0.083 hertz. Example six. An object is moving at four meters per second in uniform circular motion. It accelerates at two meters per second squared for three seconds. Manier, what does A want me to find? Okay. This would be wrong. Leave your chair down so people behind you can see. Braden, you get them both. Thank you, Braden. Okay. This would be wrong. Don't write this down. Don't write that down. This would be wrong. Because our equations for linear motion don't work for circular motion. The very beginning, I said, well, what did I say? What did uniform circular motion mean? Check the beginning of the lesson. At constant speed, you know what? V final is 4 meters per second. How do I know that? Because that's how fast I said you were going. We're not going to let you speed up or slow down right now. We can't deal with that. So I know every instinct in you, Matt, and I've taught you well, would be to say, oh, well, V final, uh, V initial 4, A is 2, T is 3. Oh, VF equals VI plus AT. Not when we're moving in a circle. the distance traveled. Again, you might be tempted to say, oh, it's d equals vit plus a half at squared. Our acceleration is what's causing us to move in a circle, but it's not causing us to speed up or slow down. It's just going to be 
VT. How fast are we traveling? Four. How long did we travel for? Three. How far did we travel? 12 meters in a circle. I don't know how the radius of the circle is. I don't know anything like that. Okay. There's a second equation for circular acceleration. I already told you that circular acceleration was v squared over r, but I also told you that v, when you're moving in a circle, is 2 pi r over the period. So I can substitute that expression in for the v. I'm going to get this still over r, but I'll have 2 pi r over the period squared. This is a fraction inside of a fraction. Yuck! Now relax. What's 2 squared? What's pi squared? And the answer is pi squared. What's r squared? Also r squared. What's t on the bottom of the fraction squared? t squared. And then over r, I'm going to write that like this. Don't write this down just yet. Just watch. Divided by r over 1. Don't write that down. How do you divide by a fraction? Because r over 1 is a fraction. Flip it and multiply. So what I'd like you to write down is this. Times 1 over r. What happens with one of our r's? Okay. And we get another expression for acceleration. It's 4 pi squared r over the period squared. This is going to go in the box right here. 4 pi squared r over the period squared. In real life, this is the one you'll use the most because when you're at Playland, it's really easy to time how long it takes something to go around in a circle. Your stopwatch on your smartphone handles that. It's much more difficult to figure out how fast it's going. You can figure it out once you have the period. So this is the one we use the most. How do I know which one I'm going to use? Oh, if the question gives me the period, I'm going to use 4 pi squared r over t squared. If the question gives me the speed, I'm going to use v squared over r. So we have this. AC equals v squared over r, and it also equals 4 pi squared r over t squared, where t equals the period, how long to go around once. r equals the radius. And v equals the speed, and it also equals 2 pi r over the period if you need to calculate it. So we have this strange situation here. In uniform circular motion, the object is moving at a constant speed, but it's accelerating. What? because its direction is changing. And the acceleration vector is constantly changing in direction because inwards depends on where you are and on the circle. If you're right there, that's the acceleration. If you're right there, that's the acceleration direction. If you're right there, that's the acceleration. If you're right there, that's the acceleration. So rarely will I ask you for a direction of acceleration. Almost always it'll just be find the magnitude. Direction, inwards inwards. So we can't use our constant acceleration equations. This is going to be tricky because I've taught you well, Kieran, and I've given you, most of you, the habit of, oh, VF squared equals VI squared plus 280. VF equals VI plus AT. T equals VIT plus a half AT squared. We can't pull those out. Instead, we have to use these equations for uniform circular kinematics. The acceleration equations, I believe, are both on your formula sheet. Is that correct? 
I think this year I gave you the circular speed equation, 2 pi r over the period. Yes? I think also on your sheet it does say period equals 1 over frequency, 1 over f. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Uh, are you serious? Did I type it wrong? No, that's AC. Yeah, yeah, okay. So let's try this again, Nate. For the acceleration, it's V squared over R, 4 pi squared R over T squared for acceleration. So on this, you put the R squared. I put the R squared instead of the pi? Wow, and I would have done that on your yellow sheet too. Okay, so we're going to fix that right now. That's what you're saying. I'm sorry. So on your formula sheet, Change it to that both on your yellow sheet and on your blue sheet. The squared goes on the pi, thank you for catching that, and not on the r. Let me fix that on my copy right now. So I've made a mistake on my formula sheet because I was typing in a hurry. Darn squareds. I apologize. And then it does say though v equals 2 pi r over the period. Yes, I hope, I hope. These other ones are not on your sheet, but they're a little intuitive. Our acceleration is weird. It's just d equals vt. All right. Turn the page. The Earth is currently rotating. I'd like you to imagine that through some cosmic catastrophe, the Earth instantly stopped rotating, but those of us on the Earth maintained our centripetal velocity we would all go flying into a wall due to inertia. First question, which wall? North wall, east wall, south wall, west wall. Once again, we get to vote. Once again, how high we handle the hand up is how sure we are of the answer. Who says we would go flying into the north wall? What? Oh, we got to do some thinking. Lyndon, ask. I don't know. I guess we're going to have to figure this out. What do you know, Lyndon? First of all, how do we know that the Earth rotates? Matt, what gives us days? Okay, so now let's look. Here's a little scale model of the Earth. Where does the sun appear to set, in the east or in the west? Where's sunset, folks? And if you don't know this, you need to do a little bit of basic knowledge. The sun rises in the blank and sets in the blank. Okay, sets in the... Which means we think it moves that way. No, no, we think it moves which way? North... East, yeah, I had it right. We think it moves that way, but is the sun moving? What's moving? So the earth must be moving that way to give the illusion of the sun. So which wall will we go flying into? Which way are we all moving right now? What direction? East. We would all go flying into the east wall. Here's the next question. At the equator, how fast would they go flying into the wall? What am I asking you to find? What am I asking you to find? Speed. Is this a linear speed or is this a circular speed? So let's write down VC equals question mark. Now I know VC equals 2 pi r over the period. On your formula sheet, and we're going to start to use this part over and over now for the remainder of the year, on the back page where you have all those data I did give you the radius of the Earth. Find it so that you know where it is. 6.38 times 10 to the 6th, I believe. Yes? T is the period of the Earth. How long does it take the Earth to go around once? All of you know this. 24 hours. Can we do physics with hours? Okay, so it's going to be 2 pi... 6.38 times 10 
to the six. We're going to be using scientific notation like crazy over the next while, so you want to make sure you're comfortable with this. And 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. I think it's 86,400 seconds in a day, but don't quote me on that. How fast would people on the equator go flying into the east wall nearest them? What's your guess? You said you, you're going to make a guess? Well, I'm just like, guessing from this video. Yep. I don't know. Let's find out. Why guess when we can calculate and get the giddy thrill of knowing that we're right? You get 464 meters per second? That's on the equator. Uh, multiply that, Matt, you might have been given the answer in kilometers per hour. Multiply that by 3.6. I think that's what you were remembering. Um, is that survivable? No. OK. Where on earth would you prefer to be living if such a disaster did occur? North Pole or South Pole? Yeah. Why? Why aren't you spinning as fast? Braden, Braden, what? Because you need to realize that when we're spinning, now on the equator, it's the full radius of the Earth, but as you move further north or further south, the circle that you're spinning along, which is a line of latitude, has a smaller and smaller and smaller radius. So R is nearly zero. In fact, if you straddled the North Pole with one side of your foot on either side of the North Pole, R would be zero because the center of your body would be dead center of the radius. And if R is zero, what's your centripetal velocity if you put a zero in for that equation? Hey, hey, holy smokes, this is starting to make some sense. Mr. Duick will now mention a little bit about angular and circular momentum and show you some cool demonstrations as well as an addictive toy. First of all, what's your homework? You can try number one. You can try number two, number three. Four is good. Five is good. Yes, so far I've assigned everything. Skipping six, seven is good. Eight is good. Nine is good. Ten is good.